Hello, my lovelies. It's Susanna, and today I want to show you how to find out how large the red shaded area is. We have this quarter circle here. They give us the radius of this quarter circle, and we want to find this red shaded area, so I call it A, and we can find it by taking the area of this quarter circle first, so of this whole thing, I call it A Q for quarter circle, but then we have to subtract these white areas of these half circles. So I call this area here A1, this area here A2, and we subtract both of them of our area of our quarter circle. This is our plan. So let's start by finding the area of our quarter circle here on the next page. If we want to find the area of the quarter circle, we can first take a look at the formula if you want to find the area of a full circle. The formula is pi times the radius squared. So if we only have a quarter circle, we just take a quarter of this formula. So 1 over 4 of pi times r squared. Our radius is given by 6 meters, so we can uh, plug the 6 here into our radius. Then we have 6 squared, so 6 times 6 equals 36. And then if we simplify this a little bit, we have 1 times 36, which equals 36 over 4, and my pi, 36 over 4 equals 9, and this is my result for our area of our quarter circle. So I plug it in here for this area, it's 9 pi. And then I try to find a 1. Let's go to another page and see if we can find the area of this half circle. We take the same uh, formula, but this time it's a half circle, so we only take half of a full circle, so 1 over 2, and multiply it by pi times r squared. What is my radius this time of this half circle? From the center of my circle to the edge of the circle, it's half of this entire side here, so it was 6 meters, so my radius of my half circle is only 3 meters. So I plug 3 into my radius here, then I have 3 squared, which equals 9, and then for my area A1, I get 1 times 9, which equals 9 over 2 pi, and this is the result for my a1. So I insert it here, 9 over 2 pi. And the only thing that's missing is my a2. So let's try and find a2. It's a half circle, so it's the same again, right? So the formula is 1 over 2 times pi times r squared. What is my r here in this case? From the center of my half circle to the edge of it. I don't know how large this radius here is. I just call it r. I only know that the entire side here is of length 6 and half of it would be of length 3, but my radius here is just in the middle of nowhere, so I don't know how long this line is. Not yet. But we haven't used an important point yet, and that is this touching point of these two circles. Every time you solve such a problem and you have two things that touch each other, this is an important thing to look at. So if we draw the line from the center of this half circle to this touching point, this is also the radius of my half circle, right? And if I do the same with this half circle here, so from this touching point to the center of my circle, this is also my radius, so I know that it's of length 3. And now I've built a line here from these two centers of my half circles. And why is it a line? Why is it straight, really? What's the explanation for this? Well, we have this touching point here where our circles touch each other, right? So it is one point that they have in common. If I draw the tangent line 
at this point here, it should look something like this. So it is a tangent line to this circle and it is the same tangent line to this circle because they touch each other at one point. And the radius, if I draw it from the center to this touching point, is always perpendicular to the tangent line to my circle at this point. And that this is the same for this half circle here. So this radius is also always perpendicular to the tangent line to the circle at this point. So I have 90 degrees, 90 degrees, so I have 180 degrees between these two lines, which means it is just one straight line. Okay, so I have this one straight line here and with this I've built a triangle here and it is a right triangle because of my quarter circle and my R, what I want to find, is part of this triangle. So let's try to find the lengths of the other sides. So this side here is just half of the entire side, so it's of length 3. And what about this length here? I only know that the entire side here is of length 6. So if I just subtract this part here of the entire side, then I get what I need. So I take the entire side, the 6, and subtract this R, and this is what I need for my triangle. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem here in our right triangle. First of all, we have to find the hypotenuse of our right triangle. That is the side that lies across my right angle. So this here is my hypotenuse. And the Pythagorean theorem says then, take one of the other sides. So take your 6 minus r and square this side plus take the other side and square it, so the 3, and then you get the hypotenuse squared, so this is r plus 3 in parentheses and square this thing. And this is an equation, we can solve it for r, and then we found our radius for our half circle here. So let's go to another page and solve this equation for r. We have parentheses squared here, so to simplify this we can just take these parentheses and multiply them by themselves. Then we have this plus 3 squared equals 9, and the same on the other side, we also have parentheses squared, so we take the parentheses and multiply them by themselves. Okay, let's multiply these two, which means that we take every element of the first parentheses and multiply it by every element of the second. So 6 times 6 equals 36. 6 times negative r is negative 6r. Negative r times 6 equals negative 6r. And negative r times negative r is plus r squared. Don't forget the plus 9 here and the same on the other side. We want to multiply, so we multiply each element by each element. r times r equals r squared. r times 3 is 3r. 3 times r again is 3r. And 3 times 3 equals 9. So let's simplify on the left side. We start with our r squared First, then we have our r parts, so negative 6 minus 6 of them is negative 12 of my r, and then the numbers 36 plus 9 equals 45. The same on the other side, we start with our r squared, then we have 3r plus 3r, which equals 6r, and then the plus 9. Okay, this is what we have so far. It looks like this is a quadratic equation, but if we take a closer look, we have r squared on the left side and r squared on the right side, so it will cancel out. So if we subtract r squared on both sides, we will get rid of it. So also take the part with r to the left side. So I subtract the 6r uh, in the step as well on both sides so that I get r squared minus r squared cancels out.
Negative 12r minus 6 of them is negative 18r plus my 45. And on the other side, these two cancel out as well. These two cancel out as well. And I only have my 9. To solve for r, I want to get rid of the 45. So I subtract it on both sides of the equation. Then I have my negative 18r here. These two cancel out. On the other side, I have 9 minus 45, which equals negative 36. And to solve for r, I divide both sides now by negative 18 so that this cancels out and only my r is left and here I have negative 36 over negative 18 which equals 2. I found my radius. My radius is of length 2 so now I can plug it into my formula here for my radius so I insert the 2 in here so I have 2 squared which equals 4. My area A2 is then 1 times 4, so 4 over 2, and then the pi, and 4 over 2 equals 2. So 2 pi is my result for my area A2. I insert it here, and now I only have to calculate this. I have 9 pi minus 9 over 2 pi minus 2 pi. So 9 over 2 equals 4.5. I think then it's easier to calculate. 9 minus 4.5 is 4.5 minus 2 is 2.5. And then I just have to add my pi. This is my area, the exact value. And if you want to find the decimal number, then your area is around 7.85. We worked with meters here, so you could add for the area square meters at the end. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm curious how you solved this problem, so please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day, and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care!